Hey my fellow Omi homies, it's Foster and I'm back at it again, apparently, with another YouTube video. I always promised myself I was never going to become one of these people, but it looks like I'm putting out content regularly now, so we're just going to go with it. Uh, just wanted to start off today's video by shouting out Cavell Anderson. Uh, I jumped by the stream earlier today with himself, Wannabe Champ, and Hello K. Uh, a lot of other content creators were there in the conversation as well. Uh, I did want to say that I listened to the vast majority of the stream and I felt as though a lot of good information was going out uh, to the community. Uh, a lot of positive things and catalysts to focus on moving forward. And I was glad to see that uh, for the most part everyone appears to be on a united front and that the community is coming together and staying positive. I wanted to take the opportunity during the live stream to hop on and speak with uh, these fellow content creators about some of the possible misconceptions surrounding the recent videos that I've put out that I've come across uh, from various members of the community. I've seen a lot of support and a lot of people come out and thank me for the content that has been released, but I've also seen a few people come out uh, who believe that the issue is just simply meant to be put under the rug and moved past. I just want to reiterate that my intention of creating this content was never to undermine or make fun of or challenge any of our content creators in the community. I think by and large, they all do a fantastic job with all the information they put out. Uh, it was simply just a different perspective that I felt the community deserved to have based on information that I had researched and come to light. So with that being said, I do agree uh, with a lot of the things that all of the content creators said. I know Champ at one point mentioned that uh, he believed that uh, Daniel Lee may have taken out the video because um, there was more negative connotations in the community rather than positive. I would say that the video itself uh, had a lot of positive aspects to it and a lot of things that I feel like the community should know about and that would make them feel even more bullish on the project but i do agree with him that outside of the actual content itself uh it's somewhat taken on a life of its own and uh it's not helping the people that i intended it to help uh that being said uh hello kale also went on to make some good points uh you know he mentioned try not to try when people try not to focus so much on what people are saying or specifically how they're saying it but the actual information behind it and i agree with that i think that sometimes we we focus too much on you know interpersonal issues or our opinion of one person or another and uh even for anyone that's come out and you know openly been vocal about supporting me i want you to support everyone i i have absolutely nothing against cavell i've supported cavell as you can see i've watched several of his videos in their entirety He's one of my favorite content creators. I have absolutely nothing against him. And I think it's important that we go out and support people. Uh, it's just everyone has something different that they bring to the table. So with that in mind, Cavell did make a point to mention that, you know, people do have the right to do their own research and come up with the facts and information as they're able to do on their own. So I just wanted to release this video to reframe kind of the conversations that have happened in the last couple of days in a more positive light because I do think that there are several things that came out of the interviews uh, that I did both privately with Ben and then publicly on Daniel Lee's stream that I think a lot of the community should be aware of because if anything it will make them more confident and bullish in their investments. Now of course this isn't financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but this is information that I'm going to present to you that I think a lot of you will find very interesting. There's a lot of things that I want to go over and I'm not going to go over all of them in today's video, but some of the things that we will be focusing on are the VV NFTs, the platform itself, the promotion of the app, the name brand licenses that we've had dropped now with Spider-Man being confirmed, and the licenses that we still haven't seen but will be coming, such as the NFLPA, the move to Immutable, the integration of the money transmitter license, the likelihood of gem to fiat, Omi to NFT, and then things that we might see happening moving forward, such as leaving tokens behind in the reserve. If you're not familiar with what that is in relation to, that was relation uh, to some comments that Ben Gadenzi had made uh, in both of our conversations. I will be touching on that at one point, but 
today's video is actually going to be primarily focused on the possibility of the master collector program and what i believe the master collector program may be able to do for our community when it comes to price action with the omi token now the reason that i bring up this ten dollar price prediction explain video that cavell champ and k made is that i do believe that there are merits to it now i know that obviously ben had his own opinions and once again i don't speak for ben that's his opinion and everyone's entitled to their own opinion i think cavell made a good point in his video he said you know people have the right to look out for their own facts and do their own research so with that in mind i did some research so what we're going to be looking at here and i want to hide the good stuff no one go back and take a screenshot we're going to focus on the Master Collector Program. Now, this is not confirmed information. This has not been released by Ecomi to any regard. But when we talk about fact and not just purely speculation, where I am getting this information from is directly from conversations that I had with Ben in relation to the model that he had created for Ecomi as it pertained to the Master Collector Program. Now, he didn't outline the entire model to me, but he did provide me with some examples of how each level of the master collector may break down in the form of a monetary contribution to have access to those features. And so I was able to take that information and essentially plug in the rest of the numbers. And we're going to go over them today. And I think that a lot of people are going to be very happy with what they see now. I do want to reiterate, this is not confirmed information. Ecomi does have the ability to completely change or overhaul the Master Collector program as we will see it once it is rolled out. But I would also like to emphasize that Ben Gadenzi was on the team and at the time when he had created this model, it was agreed upon with the team. So with that in mind, we're going to jump into it. The first column that we see here, this is the Master Collector level. So Ben indicated that 10 levels existed at the time that this was created. So we're just going through the levels one through 10. Now, in order to come up with a accurate number of users who may be in each level, it's impossible to know, right? We, we have absolutely no idea how many people might buy into Master Collector 1, 2, all the way through 10. And we also don't know what the actual incentives will be in order to get into each of those levels, which could also dictate the amount of people that may want to buy into a specific level. The prices are not set in stone, so we don't know if some of these levels will be within the reach of the vast majority of people. Um, so there's still some things that obviously we don't have confirmed, but based on the model that was created at the time, I surmised based on a distribution curve. So I just looked up a standard deviation for a distribution curve. And then what I did is pretending that this is 100% of users, we have percentages of each users that may partake in each level. Once again, there's a lot of variables, but this is just straight math to illustrate what we could have coming moving forward. So as you can see, the middle two levels they're 50%, right? 50% of all users will fall in the middle and then the curve goes out equally in either direction. So there may only be 2% of people that are in Master Collector Level 1 and there may only be two people that are in Master Collector Level 10. Once again, we may be able to earn some of these levels without contributing any money just by doing things in the application, whether it be interacting, sharing our NFTs, trading, purchasing items on the application, using Omi to purchase NFTs. We have absolutely no idea what they have as an intention, but this gives us a, the best average that we can come up with without knowing the exact amount of people that would be buying in for various reasons. Now, these next two columns represent the illustration that Ben gave me he only gave me 10 through eight as an example. And then as you can see, I was just, I just did it equally the rest of the way down. So he said, as an example, if you wanted to buy into master collector level 10, you may have to burn 10,000 US dollars worth of OMI, meaning that you forego your right to have that money. You've now purchased it. 
but you will have access to Master Collector Level 10 so long as you have your VV account and you'll have access to all of the features that you would be entitled to. Conversely, you would also have the ability to stake Omi. Now, obviously there, there needs to be more that you would need to stake in order to get these features or else no one would ever burn their Omi. They would always just stake it. So this section removes it from the circulating supply forever. This removes it temporarily while you have it staked, but both remove it out of the circulating supply. As we know, circulating supply is, is one of the, the factors that dictate the value of a token. Circulating supply, market cap. Those two numbers together will give you the token value. So with that in mind, you would have to stake $50,000 worth of OMI tokens, whatever the value of the OMI token is at that point, 50,000 of it, in order to get access to Master Collector Level 10. Now, you would have to have those tokens staked for a specific period of time. They would have to be vested for a specific period. Otherwise, you could just stake them and then immediately unstake them, and that would defeat the purpose of, of taking them out of the circulating supply. So what that time frame is, we do not know, but there would be a specific time frame. And of course, you would have access to all the features that Master Collector Level 10 gave you while those tokens were staked. But unlike the Burnt Omi, which would give you full access for the entirety of the time that you had your account, the staked Omi would only give you access so long as you had it staked. Now, of course, you could unstake that and then choose to purchase NFTs or convert it into fiat or invest in other cryptocurrencies if you wanted. But at that point, you would not have access to that master collector level. These numbers, fairly straightforward, like I said, just working their way up, working their way up. Now, this would give, obviously, people who didn't have maybe as much money uh, or maybe who weren't as interested or who just wanted to get a sense of what the rewards may get you. This would give them a little bit more access. And of course, these numbers are all subject to change. We have no idea that for a master collector level one that you would have to burn $1,000 with OMI. For all we know, they could change it to $20, $50, or maybe you even earn it for free. Once again, these are just based on the numbers that were agreed upon back when Ben and the team were creating this model for the token. What I've done here is because we can't assume how many people in Master Collector Level 1 are going to burn their OMI versus stake their OMI. That's, we would have to see the incentives that would be offered for each. And until we see that, there's no way of knowing for sure. So the best way to go about it is to take both of the totals, add them together, and then divide them by one another and get the difference between the two. So here is an example. $1,000 to burn Omi, $5,000 to stake Omi, that's $6,000. Divided in half is $3,000. So 1% of users does the 1,000, 1% 1 of users does the 5,000. We're picking the middle numbers and that's the same for everything down the chart. And like I said, the reasoning behind that is just because we don't know whether there would be any additional features or incentives that would make one of these options more appealing. Ben did say, in conversations that I had with him that he strongly believed that and that he knew several people that would very gladly burn 10,000 US dollars worth of OMI in order to gain access to the highest level of collector rewards. Once again, I couldn't say one way or another as to whether I'd be willing to do that. It would solely depend on the rewards that were available, but he also brought up a good point. He said, look at the value of some of these ultra rares that we have going in the collectible marketplace right now. If let's say Master Collector Level 10 gave you access a minute before everyone else to make your purchase, and you could almost guarantee yourself to get an ultra rare every single week. I mean, you could turn around and sell an ultra rare depending on what drop it's from for easily a thousand dollars. So that over time would easily pay for itself. So there could definitely be some, some merits and benefits to it. Now, what I've done in this column is I've taken the total US dollars locked per user count. And this is based on 500,000 users, which is the rough estimate of what the VV app currently has. Now, do we have 500,000 active users or do we have 500,000 users that would be willing to stake one or any of these amounts? We don't know, but I'll get to that later. This is just to give you the hypothetical. So taking these percentages of users as a total amount of each of these, each level 
would require for 500,000 users if 2% of users locked up $3,000 at 500,000 users, so that would be 10,000 users at $3,000 locked, it would be $30 million. That is $30 million in buy or burn pressure for the token purely based upon 2% of users locking in at Master Collector Level 1. Ben mentioned, while I was speaking to him, that he was confident, and once again, not financial advice, but just his opinion, that if 5,000 people were willing to buy Master Collector Level 10, that would cause $50 million worth of buy and burn pressure for the token. And studies have been conducted that have shown that that amount of buy and burn pressure for a token such as the model that we have could create upwards of a 30 to 70x increase in value on the token that we have because all of that money is being contributed to tokens that are now out of the circulating supply. So as we drastically dec decrease our circulating supply, the value of the remaining tokens increases significantly. So as an example, if we were to do that with Master Collector level 10 with the 5,000 that he used as an example, we could see a market cap almost instantaneously of up to $2 billion from where we are right now. That's, that's massive, massive gains. And once again, because the token is deflationary, it's not a linear growth up from where we are now in market cap to $2 billion. Because if the circulating supply remains the same, then the growth would be linear. But as the circulating supply decreases and market cap increases, the two are moving away from each other rather than just one going up while the other stays the same. So the value and how the token can increase is, it's incredible. And the way that this program was designed is amazing. And on a personal note, looking at the numbers and thinking about the utility that this will have, assuming that Akomi, who have been doing this for years before any of us even thought of an NFT, I mean, guys, they're years ahead of everything that we even thought of. Of course, they're going to know what makes the most sense. They'll have data, they'll have studies about what makes the most sense, what is going to engage the users. They'll have rough estimates about how much they think they're gonna be able to do. So when we see complaints about, you know, oh, they haven't removed any tokens, but they said they didn't need a 50 year token supply. Like they're, they're stringing us along. Why aren't they removing the tokens? They own tokens too, guys. They, they own a significant amount of tokens as a matter of fact. And it's in their best interest to do everything in their power to have the token go up in value. It serves them no benefit to add no utility to the token, have the token go nowhere, because they are going to make, in my opinion anyways, far more from their token holdings than they will from any revenue that they're generating in relation to NFTs because of all the overhead, paying licensors, paying employees. This OMI token is, is, is their ticket and they're going to add as much utility as possible to make sure that it's successful as possible. So that's something to keep in mind. So as we go through, this list that I created, once again, based on the percentages, based on the value, and based on 500,000 users, this is the amount of US dollars that would be locked up based on 500,000 users. $8.25 billion. Now, before we get very excited and think about what removing $8.25 billion from the circulating supply would do, we have to remember that this is contingent upon every single user in the application currently investing into one of these options. Is that necessarily realistic? Well, as the app gains mass adoption and popularity, it is definitely possible to see something like this. Will it happen overnight? No, not necessarily. But I would argue that you don't need to see $8.25 billion locked up when $30 million locked up alone would have huge implications on the price action. So these are things that we should be really excited about. And something to get you even more excited is what these numbers mean 
as they relate to the percentages of people that have them locked and our user count. So based on the 500,000 users that we roughly believe that we have now, $8.25 billion is what would be locked up if just based on the numbers, if everyone did exactly what the numbers dictated. 8.25 billion US dollars. But that's not realistic. Not every single person who uses the app is going to at minimum burn a thousand dollars worth of Omi. It, it's being marketed to the masses. A lot of people aren't native to crypto and a lot of people will use this app casually and may only ever buy Myrmacornos or, or less expensive NFTs. So to say that this is realistic for everyone, it's not. So we could say 50% is realistic. We could say 25% is realistic. Why not go worst case scenario, 10%. One out of every 10 people that uses the app buys into the Master Collector program. At 500,000 users, that is $825 million in buy and burn pressure. Let's let that sink in for a second. One out of every 10 people. Now, let's go even a step worse than this. 1% of people stake. So one out of every 100 people that uses the app currently buys into some form of the master collector program. That's $82.5 million in buy and burn pressure. Ben believes in his opinion that $50 million in buy and burn pressure would get us easily to a market cap of $2 billion. So what would 82.5 do? What would 825 do? Now, I want to give the caveat because I got excited when I ran these numbers. I'm sure a lot of you are listening to this and got excited about the numbers. We have to remember that 825 million US dollars worth of tokens at the current token price is 285 billion tokens. We know that we're only ever going to have a circulating supply of roughly 320 billion tokens. So if we had 285 billion tokens locked up and we only had 50 billion tokens in circulation, yeah, that's when we start to see these numbers that some people are talking about. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to put it out there. I get it. I, I see it. Now, with the current utility of the token, is it possible to see any of these numbers that any of these YouTubers are putting out? Absolutely not. Zero percent. It, it just makes absolutely no sense. I'm also not saying that that's what they're saying, but I'm just saying so everyone's on the same page. Based on the current utility of the token, it's it's not happening. It's not possible. With this master collector program, and bear in mind, this doesn't include any additional burns. This doesn't include any additional incentives that are that are added in. This doesn't include OMI to NFT directly, which burns all of the majority of those tokens. That doesn't include any of these as incentives. That doesn't include the team burning tokens. It, this is just based upon this master collector program that was created and approved at the time with the help of Ben and the Akomi team. Akomi believes that the VV app will have at least 1 million users by the end of this year. 1 million users, once again, we'll just use the 10%, so one out of every 10 people using the app joins the master collector program 1.65 billion dollars in buy and burn pressure and just to clarify because i'm not sure if i have already when i say buy and burn pressure that is you're either burning it from circulation as well or in its entirety or you're staking it and removing it from the circulating supply so 1.65 billion dollars we see an average exchange liquidity of three four million dollars a day i think it jumped up to 12 million when we got the exchange announcement the other day could you imagine in the span of a week if we locked up one and a half billion dollars worth of liquidity in the omi token oh boy we're, we're having that party wherever it is i'll be at all of them so these are just numbers to keep in mind omi or akomi believes that we could hit one million users by the end of the year so Let's say 10% of 10, so once again, one out of every 100 people joins the Master Collector program, $165 million and buy and burn pressure. 
I mean, there, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that if this is rolled out the way that it was intended to be, that we will have a minimum of a $10 billion market cap in the next six to 12 months. I didn't fully grasp it when Ben said it the first time because I didn't run the numbers. I just took what he said. It made a lot of sense to me. And I left it at that. Now, this is me showing you the facts. This is just, this is just numbers. Now, are all these numbers correct? Well, no. Once again, we're using a bell curve. This is just an, a mathematical standard deviation of numbers. The burnt OMI and the staked OMI, are they the correct numbers? Once again, they were the numbers that were approved, at least in part, by Ben and Acomi at the time when it was approved. Are those subject to change? Of course. So is there going to be 10 master collector levels? These are things that we just don't know yet. But if anything in this effect rules out even close to, they're, they're anticipating 3 to 5 million users by the end of 2022. 5 million users... If 500,000 stake, so 10% of 10%, $825 million, right? If 10%, one out of 10 stake, 8.25 billion. This is the growth that we can see in 12 months time. And for those of you that saw the interview with Ben, he would like to see this application compete with Pokemon Go, which had 800 million downloads. I'm not even going to do the math because when I did the math on this, it gave me a number to uh, expression of 11. I don't even think it would fit on the screen. I don't think I have a screen big enough to emphasize to you what having 800 million people on this app with just 1% of people staking their tokens would do. Now, just to offer some clarification, as the token rises in value, less OMI is locked relative to the value. So let's unpack that because I know it sounds a little confusing on face value. So right now, the OMI price is not 003, we'll say. Based on that, if you were to... or you know what, 003 is a, a bad number to use because it's not even. Let's use one cent as an example. If you wanted to lock up $10,000 worth of OMI or burn $10,000 worth of OMI at one cent, you would need 100,000 OMI. No, a million OMI. Now I've lost myself. You'd need more OMI. <laughs> if it was 10 cents, you would need 100,000 OMI. If it was a dollar, you would need 10,000 OMI. So as the price of OMI increases, the amount that is required to be locked up decreases. So right now, 825 million would be locked up at this price here. 285 billion tokens would be locked up at an $825 million value if we had this model come in. But once again, this only works for the price when it stays at 0029. As the price increases, the amount that would be required to be staked would decrease. So it wouldn't actually be 285 billion. I am not a mathematical wizard. I'm not even going to attempt to come up with a model that would predict how much would need to be locked up based on any of this. And if I could, I'd be honest with you, I'd probably have a job with a Comey. I probably wouldn't be making this video. So we need to trust in the experts that have created this model. I know that there's been some concerns about the model and its ability to create a rug pull and a pump and dump. The more that I look into it, I, I just, I don't see it. As the VV app becomes more popular and more mainstream, the appeal to locking up your liquidity to gain access to that will far outshadow anyone trying to sell off their tokens. And once again, as people sell off their tokens, now more tokens are required to be staked in order to get the same benefits. So yes, are whales going to sell? Whales are always going to sell. We're in investments to make money. I mean, people don't just hold on to it because it makes them feel good. Eventually, sooner or later, you're going to sell your investment. But Sooner or later, as the whales sell and people eat up that buying pressure 
to stake those rewards, the price will just continue to jump right up, right up, and will continue to just keep making and breaking all-time highs. And that's the beautiful thing of having some form of utility in your token. I'd like to point out right now, Cardano, ADA, has approximately 70% of the circulating supply locked up in staking. Cardano currently has no utility, but people believe in the project. They see where it's going and no one's rugging or, or doing anything like that on Cardano. Omi is no different. There, yes, there's people that have a ton of money or a ton of Omi tokens invested, but just look at the numbers. They're fact. They don't lie. They're not opinion to an extent, assuming that it's rolled out this way. It's very easy to see where this project could go, assuming that we continue to promote and support each other in the community, continue to onboard people that aren't involved in the project. I just, I really believe that we can accomplish almost anything here. And I know that myself personally and some of the content creators may be at outs currently based on previous information that's been released. But I just want to circle back for a moment and remind you all that it's not about the quantity of what you're saying. I could put out a hundred videos and absolutely no one can care. The reason that I'm putting out these videos is because they're researched. I believe that they have value and they should show anyone that has the ability to think logically that we're going places. And the intention of me putting out this content is to support the community and my fellow content creators to get out the message that we're going to the same place together. If any content creators would like to reach out to me to have a conversation about this or any of the other catalysts that I believe will support Ecomi and the VV app in their growth, I would love to have a conversation with any of you. I'm not a bad guy. I'm just someone who is heavily invested in a project that I strongly believe in. And I want to let as many people know about it as possible. With that being said, guys, I know I say I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not going to tell you to, subscri to subscribe, to like my videos. The content's out there. If you think that it has value, what would mean the most to me is you commenting and reaching out to me and letting me know. Because I've had a few people reach out to me on socials and in the comments and tell me that they're valuing the information that I'm putting out to the community. And at the end of the day, that's really the reason that I'm doing it. I don't need to be monetized. I don't need the exposure. What I need is for everyone to be happy with where the project is going and to support one another as we go on this journey together. So once again, thank you so much for listening. I love you guys. Peace out.